story has two significant plot twists, and one of them comes at the very end. So make sure you stick around to hear the entire story. But I will, we get Mr. Pollen. If you're I will. Of the strange, dark, and mysterious, delivered in story format. I'll say to the end, Mr. Pollen. Right in the middle of the United States is a quiet little town called Milstadt, Illinois. Milstadt is home to about 4,000 people, and had it not been for Ashley Reeves, only those 4,000 people and their friends and family would even know that Milstadt existed. In 2006, Ashley Reeves was a 17-year-old high school student who lived with her parents and her her younger sister Casey and <coughs> Milstadt. Ashley was an excellent student who even though she was over a year from her high school graduation, she was already thinking about what colleges she wanted to go to. She was also extremely likable and out. Are they aggressive? Only only two of the dogs are aggressive uh, because my son is terrified of them. Uh, the dog has literally like ran down my son before. Um, two of the dogs are aggressive. The rest are fine. Like, like, we even, like, pet them and stuff. Like, they're fine, but... ...going, and she had this huge, infectious smile, and so she had tons of friends, and she had a very serious boyfriend who her parents adored. His name was Jeremy, and he was a high school student as well. On the morning of Thursday, April 27th of that year, Ashley got up, and like every other morning, she got ready for school alongside her sister Casey, and then right before Ashley stepped out to head off to school, she told her parents that after school, she had a job interview on the other side of town, and then after her interview, her plan was to play basketball with some friends no i never do videos like mr ballin uh iceberg videos are the closest thing i'm gonna do because uh i'm i, I just wouldn't i don't i don't know i wouldn't like doing this person me personally i there's i don't find much creativity in this because it is at the end of the day kind of just reading uh like a story that happened but i'm not bashing mr ballin though i'm just saying me personally i don't i would not be creatively creative Create creatively fulfilled. Ugh and then she'd be home. And so her parents said, okay, well, hey, good luck with your job interview and just make sure you're home before 10.30 p.m. And so Ashley said, no problem, I'll see you tonight. And then she left. That afternoon after school, Ashley made her way to Jeremy's locker. And when she got to him, Jeremy handed her his keys to his car. He had an SUV and he was lending it to her for the day so she could go to the interview and then go play basketball. And so Ashley took the keys, she thanked him, she gave him a hug. And then she turned and she walked down the hallway where she met up with her sister, Casey at her locker, and then the two girls left the school, they went out to the student parking lot, they found Jeremy's SUV, they hopped inside, and then Ashley began driving them back to their house. When they got there, Casey hopped out of the car, she said bye to Ashley, and then Ashley left their house and she began driving to Fairview Heights, which was a town about 15 miles away where her interview was going to be. Several hours later, around 10 p.m., Ashley's I know that town. Parents had not heard from their daughter and it was getting close to her curfew. And so they asked Casey if she had spoken with Ashley and, you know, did she know how her interview went? Did she know when she was going to be home? But Casey would tell them, actually, no, I haven't talked to Ashley since she dropped me off from school. And so Ashley's parents said, okay, no big deal. And they called Ashley, but Ashley didn't pick up. So they sent her a series of text messages. <clears throat> but after a couple of minutes of not getting any response, they decided to just call her boyfriend, Jeremy, to see if maybe he knew what was going on with Ashley. But when they spoke to Jeremy, he would say that, you know, I haven't spoken with Ashley since I gave her the keys to my SUV. And I've actually been trying to talk to her all day. I've been calling her and texting her, but I still haven't heard back. And so at this point, Ashley's parents Monka? were starting to get really worried. And so after hanging up with Jeremy, they began calling other friends of Ashley's to see if maybe they had spoken to her and knew what was going on. But all of her friends that they spoke to all had the same story. Oh, no. We haven't talked to her since the end of school and she's not returning our calls or texts. And so Ashley's mother, she just sensed that something was terribly wrong. And so without any hesitation, she just called the police. Now, the police in this town were used to getting calls every now and again ah. from parents whose teenage child had run off and they were concerned about them. But virtually every time the police investigated, they would find the teenager had just kind of been blowing off their friends and family and they would pop up maybe a couple <clears throat> hours later, totally unharmed. But 
The Millstat police would later remark when they heard Ashley's mother's voice over the phone, the fear in her voice was so pronounced, it immediately pushed the police department to take this case very seriously. And so that night, right after this phone call, the Millstat police department went out in force to try to locate Jeremy's SUV, the car that Ashley had been driving around that day. And the first place they went to to look this for is this freaky. car was Ladderman Park, which is this very- Okay. All right. Okay, I don't like this at all. I, I, I know every single one of these towns. This is, I don't like this at all. Very popular public park that has a really popular basketball court that lots of teenagers would go to all the time. And Ashley was known to frequent that park. And this park was located about halfway between Fairview Heights, where her interview was, and Milstadt, where she lived. And so they go to Latterman Park, and right away, sitting in the parking lot, they find Jeremy's SUV. But Ashley is not in the car. She's nowhere near the car. And when they searched the car, there was nothing of significance inside of it. There was just some of Ashley's clothes lying around. The police would spend all night and well into the morning combing Latterman Park looking for any sign of Ashley, but there wasn't one. And so as the sun came up and the police were nowhere closer to finding this girl, they began to suspect that, you know, perhaps foul play was involved. And so the first person they hauled in for questioning was Ashley's boyfriend, Jeremy. But as soon as he sat in- Oh, shit. I actually was going to predict it was her boyfriend. I'm not going to lie. I was going to say it. I just didn't want to preemptively do it. <clears throat> Ball and video reference the city and county I lived in, and it freaked me the fuck out, even though the crime he was talking about was years ago before I lived here. Yeah, this freaked me out. Because <laughs> I was like, I know every single one of these towns. I've been to some of these towns. In the interrogation room, <coughs> he demonstrated a real concern for Ashley. He had a rock solid alibi and he basically was an open book. And so they quickly ruled him out as a suspect. And then the police basically began hauling in all of Ashley's friends and acquaintances and family members, basically anybody that knew her, they were bringing them into the station. Oh, it wasn't her boyfriend? Okay. Anything that could help them figure out where Ashley was. And more specifically, the police were really looking to see if any of these people were hiding something and sure enough a few of the friends that were brought in were according to a few of ashley's closest friends ashley was in not one but two romantic relationships one was the oh. public relationship she had with jeremy and the other was a secret relationship that was actually illegal. In order to hide this forbidden second relationship, Ashley would tell her what? family and her friends that she was going to the park to play basketball, when in reality, she was going to the park to meet up with the secret second partner. And huh? the day before, when Ashley went missing, her friends told police that that was the exact reason she was going to Ladderman Park. The police got the name of the secret person from Ashley's friends, his name was Sam Shelton, and the police tracked him down. When they found him, he was at a baseball practice, but the police didn't care. They marched right onto the baseball diamond, and they grabbed Sam, and they brought him back to the police station. And then when he got there, they sat him down in the interrogation room, and he's still wearing his baseball uniform, and they ask him about his relationship with Ashley. And he immediately denies it and says he does not have a relationship with Ashley. He's got no idea why he's here. But pretty quickly, after a few questions, Sam's answers became inconsistent, and so the police oh. just ratcheted up the pressure on him and then finally after 12 hours of questioning the Sheesh. interrogator brings up Sam's mother and his grandmother and he says to Sam you know how would they feel if they knew you were lying to the police right now and this just broke Sam and so he cracked now at this point the police were already expecting the worst when it came to Ashley but they were not ready for just how brutal Sam's confession would be about what exactly he did to her the following is an account and he was at baseball practice 30 hours earlier, Ashley wrapped up her interview in Fairview Heights, and she made her way to Latterman Park to meet up with Sam. And now it's not clear exactly how they met up, but eventually the two of them did connect and they made their way over to Sam's car where they became intimate. Afterwards, the two are sitting in the front two seats of Sam's car. Sam is in the driver's seat and Ashley is in the passenger seat. And while they're sitting there, something happens that causes this huge fight between the two of them. 
And at some point, Sam tells Ashley to get out of the car, but Ashley refuses. She wants to talk to him. She wants to deal with their issues, but Sam's not having it. And so he gets uh, so mad at her that uh, he lunges across the center console of the car and he puts Ashley into a vicious chokehold. Now, the he fuck? tells police his plan was to kind of yank her out of the car, but he squeezed so hard around her neck that he heard this loud popping sound coming from her neck. It was the sound of her neck breaking. And so as soon as he heard it, Sam let go and Ashley kind of crumpled forward and hit the front dashboard of the car. And so Sam is staring at her, wondering what oh! he should do. He's kind of looking around, making sure no one saw what he just did. And then he reached over and lifted her back up to see if she was still alive. And he saw she was. But instead of trying to get her help, Bruh. he decides oh, right no. then and there, he's going to kill her. And so he reaches over and he begins what? choking her. But after why is why dude criminals are so fucking stupid why why there are so many times shit happens it's like well i i would rather I, you know i would rather kill a person than just get in trouble for doing this you know what i mean why like oh my god <laughs> well guess i gotta kill you what the fuck? After several minutes of throttling her, she just wouldn't die. And so Sam pulled his belt off of his waist and he oh wrapped God. it around Ashley's neck. And then he began pulling. But he would tell police he couldn't stand looking at Ashley's face while he did this. He said she was staring right at him. Her tongue was coming out of her mouth. She was frothing and her face was turning this ghastly shade of gray blue. And so at some point when she still hadn't died, he released the belt from around her neck and he turned her body so she was facing the window away from him. Oh. And then he repositioned the belt on her neck and then he put his foot on her back to use as leverage. And then he pulled as hard as he possibly could on her throat for quite a while until the belt actually broke around her neck. And then at that point, he checked to make sure she was dead. And when she was, he stuffed her down into the floorboards in front of the passenger seat. And then he drove several miles across town to another park called Citizens Park that was very heavily forested. And once he parked what in the, the parking fuck? lot, he looked around to make sure no one was watching. And then he dragged Ashley's body out of the car and deep into the woods where he abandoned her. It would turn out Ashley was far from the only teen teenage girl who found Sam Shelton attractive. Many teenage girls in the area thought he was the perfect catch. He was smart, he was handsome, and he had these beautiful- What- what year did this happen? Like how- yeah, how hard do you have to fucking pull to break a belt, man? That's leather. I- I, I guess he must have like broke like the- the latch on it? Maybe? beautiful striking blue eyes that you couldn't help but just stare at however there was something unique about sam that made him fundamentally different than all the other guys at their schools sam was not a student he was a 27 year old middle school teacher in milstadt and he also was the high school baseball coach he had never been ashley's teacher directly however years earlier when she was in middle school oh he had begun that's my age her. ew Ew! What the fuck? Exploitation. And so fast Ew! forward to 2006 when she was 17, he had effectively manipulated oh. her into believing she was in this romantic relationship with him when in reality he was just using his position of power to abuse her. In addition to being a school teacher, Sam was also an aspiring pro wrestler. He would often compete in local showcases under the nickname The Teacher. While Sam was probably What? nowhere near good enough to actually become a professional wrestler like you would see on TV. He was extremely strong and really knew how to do a chokehold. And so when he attacked Ashley and put her in that vicious chokehold, she had no chance at escaping. She was completely doomed. Shortly after his confession, Sam would tell the police that he would take them out into the forest of Citizens Park to try to find Ashley's body. But when they got there, it was late, it had been raining for several hours, and Sam right away acted like he couldn't figure out exactly where he had left her. And so the police were actually starting to think, you know, is he lying to us? Is this whole thing just kind of made up? Did he really attack her? Is she really out here? But after about 30 minutes of the police and Sam kind of trudging around the thick forest, 
One of the officers suddenly sees something on the ground. He raises his flashlight and there in a clearing is Ashley's body. And so the police and Sam, they walk okay, over I thought to her it was about and to they're be standing twist. above her ruined body. <clears throat> her neck is totally bent at a grotesque angle. She's covered in bugs. But as they're ah, standing there and they're ah, watching her, her chest ah, suddenly starts to move. She wasn't dead. She had been left for dead and she had been out in the woods oh! with a broken neck for 30 hours in the freezing cold and the rain. Oh! She only had a t-shirt and some pants on, but she was alive. And so moments later, the paramedics, they come rushing oh into the my forest, God! they pick her up really gently, they bring her out and they rush her to the hospital where she'd be put into a medically induced coma. The doctors would tell her family that unfortunately her injuries were just too serious and we don't expect her to ever wake up again. But miraculously, she would. Now, she would have to relearn how to walk and talk and eat and drink, but she would do all of those things. And today, she is 32 years old. She is happily oh, married. She has two kids of her own. Happy and ending? And by and large, she leads a very happy, normal life. As happy for Sam ending? Shelton, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for attempted murder, and he's still in prison today. However, he is up for parole in 2024. Almost happy ending. We were almost there, guys. We were almost there. We were, we almost had that happy ending. Two more years, am I right, guys? Two more years, and he might come back. We were so close to a good ending, man. Come on. Oh. Yeah, it's always the sentencing that ruins this shit. It, like, blue balls me, man. Oh. And in my, yeah, he's going to be in my area too. Yay. Yeah. We're moving, so. At least I don't have to worry about it. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribe? I'll thank you each.